Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Will you please clear the aisles so that the procession may enter the gymnasium?
Will the degree candidates now join me in welcoming our faculty?
Senator Reed didn't make it. Reverend Nichols, Congressman Kennedy, Congressman Langevin, member of the class of 1990, General Treasurer Tavares, members of the General Assembly, members of the Board of Governors, Frank Caprio, Michael Ryan, member of the class of 1974, James Depreet, John Howell, Michael Schuster, Jose Gonzalez, a member of the class of 1976, Allison DiPetrillo, and Thomas Rocket. Commissioner of Higher Education, Jack Warner. Commissioner of Elementary Secondary Education, Peter McWalters. Honorary degree recipients. Other distinguished platform guests, including Governor Bruce Sunland and Mayor Scott Avedesian of the City of Warwick. Alumni. Trustees of the Foundation, members of the faculty, staff, administration, parents and spouses, relatives and friends of the degree recipients, and members of the class of 2003. <laughs> oh, I think you can do better than that. That's my, that's it. That's more like it, that's more like it. I welcome you to the spring, I think, spring commencement of Rhode Island College at the beginning of its sesquicentennial year. The convocation will begin with the singing of our national anthem led by Ms. Shauna E. McKay. Following the anthem, Please remain standing for the invocation which will be given by Reverend Larry Nichols from the college's campus ministry. Jack Reed just arrived. Okay. And before the music starts, let me welcome the United States Senator. Jack Reed, and a recipient of an honorary degree in 1999. Welcome, Senator. seated. Oh, no, not yet. Sorry, I'm sorry. Forget that direction.
Congratulations, class of 2003. Let's bow our heads. Gracious God, we offer thanks for the occasion that draws us together on this day and the graduation of this class. We offer thanks for this institution here at Rhode Island College, its president, John Nazarian, all administration, faculty, staff, and students. We thank you for excellence and academic achievement. We thank you for all that are present here in this platform as today we draw together to honor and celebrate this occasion, which again draws us together. Amen. Please be seated. I thank Ms. McKay <clears throat> for her performance and Reverend Nichols for today's invocation. And I've at, been asked to announce that there are seats throughout the whole auditorium. Believe it or not, there are more than 5,000 people in here today. So we welcome you. There are 1,000 people over in the auditorium at Roberts watching this on closed circuit television. Welcome to you, and those of you that are in the Gage Auditorium, welcome. At this pro point in the program, it is customary that the governor bring the greetings of the state. At this moment, Governor Kacheri is a few miles north of here, where he is being honored at the Bryant College commencement, and where he is serving as their principal speaker. The governor will be joining us later in the program to bring greetings at that time. There is a gentleman on stage here who wears many robes. Some of you may have seen him in other robes, like judicial robes. But today he wears academic robes. And he is the chairman of the Board of Governors for Higher Education. It is my pleasure to present to you the chair of the Board of Governors of Higher Education, the Honorable Frank Caprio. Thank you, Mr. President, elected officials, members of the academic community, and most importantly, friends, families, and the class of the year 2003. Now, President Desarian alluded to the fact that I wear many robes, and perhaps some of you uh, have seen a certain TV program. As a matter of fact, I saw quite a few familiar faces as I was walking down the aisle. Now, I want to tell you a story about the court that you, you really don't know, but President Nazarian is a very religious man. And he had occasion to come before my court, and after he did, he said, uh, called me and said, Frank, I really think that you should begin every session of your court with a prayer. And I'm going to recommend the Reverend Nichols, who, who you just heard give the invocation here today, have the Reverend Nichols come down and open your court session with a prayer. So I acquiesced, and the Reverend Nichols came down and gave a beautiful invocation just before the court session began. He invoked the memories of St. Francis of Assisi and several other saints and he blessed the proceedings. So moved were the members of my staff that after the court proceeding was over, a young lady went up to the Reverend Nichols and said, Reverend, tell me, do you pray for the judge? And the Reverend replied, no, I've observed the judge in action and I pray for the court. I would be remiss, uh, I, I obviously am here today representing the Board of Governors for Higher Education. I am so honored and proud that two of our members are the recipients of honorary degrees. And they are to be congratulated for their untiring efforts and their dedication and loyalty and their hard work in the cause of higher education. And I refer to our Chairman Sally Dowling and Jim Dupree. Congratulations to the parents of all the graduates today. I know that you, many of you have endured great hardship 
and suffering to ensure that this day arrived. And to the class of 2003, congratulations. It is your day. Today is your commencement. It's your day more ways than one. You have learned that genius is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. You have worked so hard for this day that I know the future is bright for all of you. What I'd like to say to you is that your commencement is a new day. It's a new beginning. It's a time for your generation to begin, to be bold, to restore faith in ideas, to restore civility to debate and honesty to every part of our lives. It is time to put a premium on intellect again and move away from the mundane. It's time to strive for excellence and renew our creativity. It's time to celebrate the wealth of, Americans, of the American spirit as well as the American economic wealth. It's your time, time for a new generation with a bold commitment to not, not only do better, but be better than any other generation. Because in the end, the true wealth of a nation is not measured in dollars and cents. It's measured by the strength of faith the power of hope, and the gift we give of ourselves in the service to others. Those are the values that are so important. Simple things like faith, hope, and charity. Hold on to them, cherish them, and live by them. Good luck to all of you, and Godspeed on your journey wherever it takes you. I was never before him in court. <laughs> Yet. Thank you, Judge Caprio. At this time, I would like to share a few thoughts on the occasion of Commencement 2003. We are holding our commencement ceremonies indoors today because of the unseasonably cold weather for this spring day. However, we are here together on this joyous occasion, sheltered from the cold, as we join in spirited celebration of academic achievement. The love in our hearts keeps us warm, and our pride in the accomplishments of our graduates glows like the shining sun in a clear blue sky. The weather may change, but our love and our pride in you will continue forever. Graduates of Rhode Island College have traditionally been successful in dealing with challenges of all magnitudes. During commencement season, beginning with our cap and gown convocation, and continuing through today's program, we hear of obstacles overcome, challenges met, and success stories built on sheer determination and hard work. Behind every graduate who will walk across the stage today, today there is a story to tell of a journey now completed with the anticipation of new challenges and journeys that lie ahead. Although we cannot predict with any degree of certainty what we may face in the years ahead, we know that a college education has proven time and time again to be one of the best preparations for life. Your experience at Rhode Island College will serve you well as it has for past generations of alumni, as a solid foundation for lifelong learning. Armed with the critical thinking skills that you have developed here, I am confident that you will be able to adapt and to succeed in just about any environment that comes your way. I wish you all well. At this point, in the ceremony, <clears throat> we paid tribute to the class celebrating the 50th anniversary of its graduation. 
Will the members of the class of 1953 please rise? And may I invite the audience to join me in recognizing those members of our golden anniversary class who are here today. At this time, it is a special delight to present Sidney Williams and Lucille Bilodeau Sherlock, members of the class of 1953, who will make a special presentation to the college on behalf of the Golden Anniversary class. Honored platform guests, honored members of the class of 2003 and members of the class of 1953. As we, the members of the class of 1953, gathered together the other night, we were all remembering our one building school with the muddy athletic field that also served as a parking lot. We also clearly remember seeing almost daily members of the staff, some of whom are now memorialized by having buildings named in their honor. Presidents Whipple and Gage were always in the corridors. Fred Donovan and Mary Lee were always available for student consultation and advice. And there was another person who at the time of our graduation was a member of the junior class. And his name and the great contributions to this institution have all been, already been recognized by the naming of the Center for the Performing Arts and whose 50th class reunion will occur next year. 50 years ago. Times were somewhat different then Rhode Island College was called Rhode Island College of Education. Its goal was to send into the state's public schools well-trained teachers. The quality of its graduates was so good that superintendents of schools eagerly snapped up graduates to teaching positions. And the tuition was good too. For most of us, the only expense, expenses were for books, as well as personal transportation to and from the college. But that one building school with its muddy parking lot was one of the most respected teacher training institutions in New England. Today, things are quite a bit different. The one building college now has many buildings. The muddy parking lot has been replaced by well-appointed buildings and facilities. Diversity of majors makes the college a place where other disciplines grow and flourish. The campus is so extensive and so well maintained that we of the class of 1953 are both amazed and delighted by what we have seen and more than a little envious. We are also amazed and encouraged by how great we look. <laughs> The women are just as attractive as they were then. <laughs> and the men just as handsome as the women remember us. <laughs> True, we are a bit grayer and slower than we were then. And around eight o'clock at night, our yawns and aching backs let us know that we ain't what we used to be. But you'll find that out when you come back 50 years from now. So our wishes for you on this day of your commencement and your new lives as not only equal partners of the 21st century, but as members of an alumni from one of the great institutions in this wonderful state. May you ladies of the class of 2003 continue to look as lovely as you do today. May you men of the class continue to be as handsome 
as the ladies see you today. <laughs> and may your lives be filled with health, joy, and good fortune so that when you have your 50th anniversary, you'll look as good as the class of 1953. Congratulations <laughs> and God bless. On behalf of the class of 1953, I would like to present this gift to the college. On behalf of the college, I thank you for sharing your thoughts and memories with us and for the generous support for your alma mater, which I shall keep. <laughs> I'll give it to you. You should, see, you should have been there in, in the 50s and see how the seniors treated the juniors. <laughs> we had to do everything they asked us to do which we did in 1954. <laughs> At the graduate commencement on Thursday night, the college conferred the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws upon the Honorable Jeremiah S. Jeremiah, Jr., Chief Judge of the Rhode Island Family Court. Judge Jeremiah is with us again this morning, and may I ask him to please stand and be recognized. Dr. Dan L. King, Vice President for Academic Affairs, will now present today's candidates for honorary degrees. Mr. President, as the college's chief academic officer, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for honorary degrees. In granting these degrees, we welcome these esteemed individuals to our college family and look forward to their joining us and participating in future activities at will, what will now be their alma mater. We're honored to have such accomplished individuals join the Rhode Island College community and especially delighted to welcome them today. Dr. Nazarian, we ask that you now confer these honorary degrees upon our special guests. As I present our candidates, Dr. Lenore A. DeLucia, Vice President for Administration and Finance, and Dr. Gary M. Penfield, Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, will assist in the hooding. Mr. President, I have the honor to present for the honorary degree of Doctor of Pedagogy, <clears throat> James A. Depreet. James A. Depreet, lifelong public school leader and education advocate. The system of public education in America has been the foundation of a vibrant and prosperous society, the likes of which have never before existed in the long annals of civilization. During the past 150 years, the early normal schools that later became colleges of education and later still comprehensive colleges and universities were the institutions that prepared professional classroom teachers for the demanding roles of helping to educate each succeeding generation to take its place in the world, to help lead, guide, and collaborate with these dedicated teachers, there emerged a special type of individual called a principal. The role of the principal is unique in all of education. A champion of students, a professional coach and mentor, and an advocate of the learning process on one hand, but also a master of all trades, a skilled diplomat who can earn the admiration, respect, and cooperation 
of superintendents, parents, school committee members, union officials, taxpayer groups, and neighborhood residents alike. The art of principalship requires the ability to strike fear in the hearts of misbehaving students, but also the compassion to offer real encouragement and support to those youngsters who may be experiencing life's many tragedies. James A. Dupreet, all those who speak of you recite these as qualities you have exhibited throughout your outstanding lifelong career as a teacher, principal, and public school administrator. With degrees from Providence College and the University of New Mexico, you began your career in education as a teacher of modern languages and were selected as a Fulbright Scholar. In 1968, you were recruited to serve as Dean of Boys at Cranston High School East and thus began a 25-year career as an education administrator with two years as principal of Warren High School leading to 21 years as the beloved principal of Coventry High School, a record of longevity rarely seen in such a challenging position. Even in semi-retirement, however, your administrative expertise has remained in high demand, and you have continued to serve school districts throughout the state in interim capacities, including service to Narragansett, North Providence, Lincoln, Bristol Warren, West Warwick, Westerly, South Kingston, Johnston, and Smithfield. Because of the depth and breadth of your knowledge of the state's public school system, together with the personal and professional qualities that have made you one of the state's most notable education leaders, you have been selected by two governors of Rhode Island to chair the Board of Regents for Elementary and Secondary Education, a position that also includes membership on the Board of Governors for Higher Education. You have also brought your inexhaustible experience, enthusiasm, and good cheer to assist numerous national, state, and local organizations and task forces concerned with education and community-based issues. That you have accomplished so much, won the respect of so many, and together with your wife, Pina, raised three wonderful and successful children and have been blessed with many grandchildren, it is clear that you are a genuine Rhode Island treasure. Therefore, by the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the Board of Governors for Higher Education and the faculty of Rhode Island College, I confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Pedagogy with all of its associated rights, privileges, and honor. I present you with this diploma and cause you to be vested with the insignia of the office. Congratulations. Mr. President, I have the honor to present for the honorary degree of Doctor of Public Service, Sarah T. Dowling. That's what I say to Sarah T. Dowling, civic leader, noted attorney, advocate for public higher education. The essence of our democratic form of government is based on the concept of citizen participation. Yet, even for the most skilled, intelligent, and socially conscious amongst us, there are many difficult choices to be made in balancing the demands 
of education, career, and family with the call to render public service. Some extraordinary individuals succeed in some areas. You, Sally Dowling, have mastered all of the above. You came of age in, a, in an era when many opportunities were not open to women. Indeed, in an article published in the Providence Journal not long after you were named to the chair, to chair the Rhode Island Board of Governors for Higher Education, you related the story that in 1962, as a young junior at Wellesley College, you had to ask your dean's permission to marry. After your graduation and while raising a family, you continued your pursuit of learning as a lifelong endeavor, eventually earning a Juris Doctorate from Northeastern University School of Law and a Master of Laws in Taxation from the Boston University School of Law. In 1977, you joined the Providence firm Adler, Pollock, and Sheehan as their first female attorney. Not long thereafter, your remarkable legal and managerial talent led the firm to name you a partner. As your stature continued to grow as an attorney, so did the demands on your time within the legal profession. You have worked with the Ro Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and American Bar Associations on such issues as business, taxation, ethics, and professionalism. During this time, you have also been sought out to take leadership roles within the community, often charged with finding solutions for some of the most difficult and complex problems. For example, you accepted the challenge of chairing the board of directors of what many consider Rhode Island's cultural crown jewel, the Trinity Square Repertory Company, at a time when that organization was experiencing its deepest financial crisis. Your leadership was instrumental in returning Trinity to financial health and ensuring its long-term future. To assist the city of Providence, you were enlisted as vice chair of the Providence Charter Review Commission, as chair of the Providence Salary Review Commission, as a member of the Providence School Board Salary Review Commission. Taking a leave from your career at Adler Pollock and Sheehan in the late 1980s, you served as the state, you served the state as policy director, legal counsel, and director of legislative affairs within the office of the governor. In 1998, you were appointed to chair the Board of Governors for Higher Education, a position you held for four and a half years. As chair, you served the entire system of public higher education by working to promote excellence, access, affordability, accountability, and improvement of teacher preparation. You also worked tirelessly to secure additional funding for numerous statewide asset protection and capital projects. At Rhode Island College, some of the projects that have, been, have benefited and continue to benefit from these efforts include funding for East Campus renovations, reconstruction of the future home of the School of Social Work, and the rebuilding of Alger Hall to accommodate the School of Management and Technology. That you have gained the respect and admiration of leaders from both political parties demonstrates your effectiveness. That your legacy includes four talented and successful children that you raised together with your husband, Dr. Joseph Dowling, and that you can now proudly boast of 10, 10 and a half, excuse me, 10 and a half grandchildren is testimony that you, Sarah T. Dowling, are an outstanding citizen of Rhode Island and an inspiration to us all. Therefore, by the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the Board of Governors for Higher Education and the faculty of Rhode Island College, 
I confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Public Service with all of its associated rights, privileges, and honors. I present you with this diploma and cause you to be vested with the insignia of the degree. Congratulations, Dr. Dowling. Mr. President, I have the honor to present for the honorary degree of Doctor of Civil Law, Martha E. McSally. Martha Elizabeth McSally, courageous defender of freedom and equality. The First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, Article I of the Bill of Rights, is thought by many to be the soul of the Constitution. It states, I quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise hereof or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances." End quote. The context of the First Amendment is often considered in such sweeping historical tableaus as the Revolutionary War or the Civil Rights Movement. We think of the courageous men and women who have risked their careers, their reputations, and too often their very lives to defend these freedoms that we consider among the most basic to humankind. In the United States, at least, we often take such freedoms for granted. Yet, as has often been said, the price of freedom is not free. You, Martha McSally, are the embodiment of the true patriot, the individual who was willing to engage every ounce of ability to forge a trail for others to follow. From your earliest days as valedictorian at St. Mary's Academy Bayview to your exceptional academic success at the United States Air Force Academy, and on to your graduate education at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University, you have excelled in all your endeavors. You served as an action officer at the Pentagon on military policy issues, and later worked on defense strategy issues at NATO principal headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. Upon returning to the States, you began pilot training and proved so adept at flying high performance aircraft that you were named a T-37 pilot instructor. When the Air Force changed its policy to allow women to pilot combat aircraft, you were selected as one of the first seven women for such an assignment. In January of 1995, in a single-seat A-10 Warthog, you became the first American woman to pilot a combat aircraft into enemy territory on your first mission over Iraq. In subsequent deployments, you participated in increasingly responsible roles in Operations Southern Watch, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. Yet, even as you exhibited extraordinary skill and bravery, military policy required that you adhere to standards of behavior and dress during your deployment in Saudi Arabia that stood in direct contradiction to the very freedoms you were willing to risk your life to defend. Moreover, 
such policies were clearly discriminatory toward women. Rather than accept these policies, you began to petition respectfully for redress of these grievances. Initially, your efforts were not successful, but you did not give up in this long, arduous, and often very lonely fight. Ultimately, you were successful as both the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives by unanimous votes agreed with your cause and passed a law prohibiting the military from imposing such discriminator discriminatory ro rules, I should say, excuse me. The President of the United States subsequently signed the law containing this language. Lieutenant Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Martha Elizabeth McSally, you are truly a defender of freedom in every sense of the word. Therefore, by the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the Board of Governors for Higher Education and the faculty of Rhode Island College, I confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Civil Law with all of its associated rights, privileges, and honors. I present you with this diploma and cause you to be vested with the insignia of the degree. And now, for the purpose of presenting the commencement address for 2003, I give you Dr. Martha Elizabeth McSally. Thank you so much, President Nazarian, Senator Reed. Congressman Kennedy, Congressman Langevin, General Treasurer Tavares, Chairman Caprio, members of the Board of Governors, fellow honorees, distinguished platform guests, there's so many of them, aren't there? Friends and family, and especially the awesome class from Rhode Island College of 2003. <laughs> I just want to tell you how thankful I am. I've only been home from Saudi Arabia on my most recent deployment for three weeks. And I'm thankful uh, to be back in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I got to tell you the story while I was over there. I've spent about 500 days in Saudi Arabia in the last two years or so. And uh, actually, I went back this last time and I saw one of the Saudi officers and he said, Ah, oh, welcome home. <laughs> I said, I gotta find another line of work. <laughs> this is not good. But I saw something different this time. Previous times when I'd been in Saudi Arabia, as most of you know, as a custom, the women walk five to ten feet behind the men. And, you know, it's because of their deference and where they stand in society and and, uh, you know, that's just a common practice. Well, when I went back this time, what I saw was an exact reversal. <laughs> the women, when I went off base, were actually walking five to ten feet in front of the men, all of the wives, you know, in front of the one man. And I couldn't believe it. I thought, you know, I know we've been trying to bring about some change. Could it be? You know, that some radical revelation has come and women are finally in a place of respect. And I went up to one of the women and said, I can't believe it. You got to tell me. I mean, I was just here recently. What changed? And she said, landmines. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry. I know that wasn't politically correct. And I am making light of a very serious issue, but I wanted to see if I could get your attention. I am very thankful to be home, and in all seriousness, in a nation that, that is free, in a nation where we can choose to go to school, where we can choose uh, you know, to learn, where we can choose so many things that we do take for granted. I'm so thankful to be home. I'm very thankful uh, to be here today, to be welcome home to Rhode Island and Rhode Island College, and for this uh, honorary degree that I, I really feel so unworthy of. I, I really am just an officer who is trying to uphold my oath of office to the Constitution. But I am very, I am very thankful to be in your company today and be celebrating this day uh, with you. I'm thankful to be accompanied by one of my previous teachers. Peg Brown is here. Where is she? She was a high school teacher of mine at Bayview, and I want to use her as an example because I am so thankful for her. I was a, a tough kid in high school. I mean, I really had a tough time. And my dad went, died when I was 12 years old, and I had a tough adolescence trying to figure out what it was all about. But if it wasn't for teachers like Peg Brown, I wouldn't be here right now, literally. I would not. She believed in me, she invested in me, and she taught me. And she hung in there. And all you have teachers here at, from this college and in your other schools that are the same way. And so I'm thankful for her and I'm thankful for all of you, the faculty of Rhode Island College. Each of you can remember one or two or more that have made a huge difference in your life, haven't you? Do you remember? So let's give them a round. And like you all, I am thankful for my parents and family. As I said, my dad died suddenly at age 49 when I was 12 years old. But he instilled in me uh, principles and values and a lifestyle that has affected me and has, has set me on the path that I, that I am on. I was so proud of him. And at age 12, I made a commitment to make him proud. And I'm thankful for his contribution to my life and to the society around him. And I'm thankful for the example of my mom, who's here today that she was a strong woman of faith and character and perseverance and all those things were instilled upon me. So I want to thank my mom and I want to thank all of you parents and friends that are here today that supported all the graduates through these times. Amen? <laughs> and I know this isn't like the Academy Awards, but I do want to say one more thank you because this does relate to all of us. I want to say thank you to Congressman Langevin because, as you heard, uh, after trying within the executive branch and then the judicial branch, we eventually uh, went through the legislative branch in order to bring about a change to these policies. And although there was unanimous support, Congressman Langevin stepped forward and took the lead in sponsoring the bill that was drafted. And if, if it wasn't for that leadership and it wasn't for that commitment that you made very real, then we would not be talking about the success of this policy being overturned, so thank you. All right, I'm going to tell you a quick story and then we're going to get on with the time that for you all to walk across the stage, okay? And I just want to tell you a story that has inspired me and inspired me in the eight-year battle that I had in to overturn this policy. And that story is one of Esther. Has anybody heard of Esther before? <laughs> no, this isn't going to be Sunday school, but Esther is, is out of the Old Testament, and it's a story of a young girl who was an orphan and at the time uh, was living in exile. And she was raised pretty much by her cousin. And I'm really going to paraphrase here, so if anybody's a biblical scholar, they may get a little upset. But the bottom line was the king, King Xerxes, he needed a new queen. And so they went out looking around, you know, for the most beautiful uh, uh, woman out there it, who he wanted to receive as his queen. And Esther went through a series of competitions, you know, and she ended up winning the hand of the king. And they didn't know that she was a Jew, uh, uh, but she, you know, received his hand and she became the, qu the queen. And what happened over time, see, was there was a guy in the court of the king who, who really didn't like the Jews, and so he wanted to just wipe them all out. So he, he, he signed, a, he got the king, tricked the king to sign an edict to wipe all the Jews out, okay, just take them out. And he said, sure, he had no idea his wife was one of them. And so at this critical time where, you know, the very people, uh, uh, the Jewish nation were, were at stake, their very lives were at stake, and Esther herself, Esther's cousin who raised her, who was a man of character, came to her and pled with her to go meet with the king to plead for her people. 
Well, at the time, if anybody approached the king and they weren't invited, they were punishable by death. Anyone. Unless the king extended his scepter in grace. So if you were to approach the king, you were taking a big risk. You either are going to be received or you're going to be killed. And Esther said, and I paraphrase, hey, you know, I can't do this. You know, I can't, I can't go to him. I'm going to be killed. There's nothing I can do about this. And her cousin Mordecai said to her, and this is the verse that convicted me eight years ago about standing up on this issue and has continued to convict me in all the difficult steps that I had to take along the way. And this is the verse, and it applies to all of us. Can it be that you were put in this position for such a time as this? Did you hear that? Can it be that you were put in this position for such a time as this? I had been given opportunities to go to the Air Force Academy and to become an officer and become a fighter pilot. A little hard work, lots of good timing. And those opportunities came with responsibility. And that verse convicted me. Can it be that that is the very purpose that I would come to this position? Not so, you know, I could be a cool fighter jock. Not so, you know, I could wear the flight suit around. Not so I could, you know, do all the other things about having, you know, being able to serve our nation and, and, and be doing an awesome job. But can it be that the very reason I came to that position was to stand and to sacrifice for that moment? Now, Esther's answer after much thought was, if I perish, I perish. I gotta do the right thing. So as the story goes, she goes to visit the king, he extends her scepter, and then through the end of the story that I won't tell you, you're gonna have to read it now, uh, you know, she saves the nation. Now had she not taken that brave step, who knows what would have happened. And she said, if I perish, I perish. And you know what? Sometimes when you step out like that, you perish. I hate to tell you, you perish. But it doesn't matter. It's the choice that you make in that moment to, to stand on purpose that matters. So that verse has taught me a couple things, along with all the other experiences I've had in my life. The first one is, for all you guys, I want to encourage you, and this is family and friends and faculty too, every day get up and remind yourself that you need to live a purpose-driven life. That every day... There, there, is, there is something that you are called to in that day, in that season, that is purposeful. We're driven by a lot of things, I'll tell you, in society. We're driven by materialism, we're driven by acceptance, we're driven by wanting to be liked, we're driven by wanting to, to uh, get along with people or wanting to achieve a certain status. But I'll tell you, nobody is ever on their deathbed saying, I wish I spent more time at the office, are they? <laughs> They're never saying, I wish I just had a little more money, you know, or got one more, you know, status. People reflect on, what is it that I gave? What is it that I did? What did I achieve? Each and every one of us is created with a purpose and a calling. And you guys have all sorts of messages going to you, whether it be you know, what you believe is inside you or what your parents want you to be or what your teachers want you to be or whatever. You gotta go in a quiet place by yourself and figure out, what is my purpose? And live a purpose-driven life. I just want to encourage you that. And the other thing I'll encourage you, and then we can get on with it, is to live every day of, as if it's your last. And I don't mean like, well, you know, <laughs> you might as well just party because, you know, this could be my last day. And I don't mean that, you know, in a morbid sense either. But the reality is when we get up in the morning, you can do a little bit of that. When you get up in the morning, you really don't know. You really don't know. When my dad woke up the morning of his death, he did not know that, that was his last day. When the people went into the World Trade Center that day to work, they didn't know it was their last day. You don't know. And, and that can paralyze you in fear. Don't, you know, don't do that. But I mean, the, the, the side of it is, I got to live every day like it's like, I'm not going to just sacrifice these next few years so I can get to somewhere else where I want to be. You might not have that time. So every day, get out of bed in the morning, live a purpose-driven life, and, and live it as if it's your last day. And I'll tell you, more than anything, that has been the, the most satisfying uh, way to view life and to live my life that I could impart on you guys. As you stand this day, you walk across the aisle and you head out into your journey ahead, which is exciting and very challenging. So I leave you with, can it be that you were put in this position for such a time as this? God bless you all and God bless America.
Thank you, Dr. McSally, for sharing those very meaningful thoughts with us on this occasion. And let me add how delighted we are that you are safe and healthy and that circumstances have permitted you to be able to be with us today. You are truly an inspiration. We thank you. I now call upon Mr. William A. Dory IV, President of the Class of 2003, to speak for the degree candidates. Mr. Dory. Class of 2003, distinguished guests, family and friends. I gotta say I'm a little disappointed today. Over the last four years, I've heard about an all-powerful, all-knowing person that resides in Roberts Hall. We'll call this person President Nazarian. <laughs> but for all this power, he was not able to deliver us a sunny day until after the ceremony had started. <laughs> President Nazarian, are you losing your mojo? <laughs> As many of you walked in today, you might have noticed a building under renovation. It's the one with all the fences around it. This is the student union for Rhode Island College. Of course, they'll finish it after the class leaves, but at least it'll be finished. For the past year and a half, this building has been under renovation, a $5 million project. They'll bring this building into the 21st century. Looking on the outside of this building, you may not really realize how much work has gone into it. Of course, there's a new entrance on the quad, nice glass suit uh, structure, and there are real new windows, but you can't really tell. The real changes have been on the inside of the building. There are more office spaces, new wiring, and there's a redesigned ballroom that'll better serve the students of this campus. This is a lot like the class of 2003. On the outside, we've changed a little. Some of us gained a little weight, grown some facial hair, but we're pretty much the same people that entered this building or this college four, five, six years ago. <laughs> the real changes for the class of 2003 have been on the inside. It's the skills that we've learned as a class. We as a class have learned critical thinking, reasoning, reasoning and insight. Class of 2003, take these skills and use them. Don't worry about what others do in life. Simply use the skills that you have earned at Rhode Island College to be the best people you can possibly be. Because in life, the only thing that we can really control is our own actions. Thank you very much, and let's graduate. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dory. Timing is everything. <laughs> I wish you the best at graduate school this fall. Something tells me that at some point in the future, we may all be hearing from you once again. <laughs> and we are also very grateful to the members of the class of 2003 for their generous class gift. We hope that no matter where life takes you, all of you will continue to consider Rhode Island College as your home. At this time, I call upon Dr. King to initiate proceedings for the conferral of degrees. Mr. President, it is my very pleasant obligation to introduce the several deans who, on behalf of their faculty, will recommend to you the conferment of degrees, indicating successful completion of studies. 
This is a time of celebration for the candidates and their families. I know that our faculty join me in congratulating our students and, ex and in expressing our pride in them. Dr. John A. Bucci, Professor of Foundations of Education and Dean of the Feinstein School of Education and Human Development, will now present candidates for baccalaureate degrees within the school. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees within the Feinstein School of Education and Human Development please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the class of 2003 candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science within the Feinstein School of Education and Human Development. Those candidates who have completed all requirements for the degrees are recommended to you by the faculty and the Board of Governors for higher education. Members of the class of 2003, candidates for Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees, by virtue of the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the Board of concurrent action of the faculty of Rhode Island College and the Board of Governors for Higher Education, I confer upon those of you who have completed the appropriate requirements, the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science with all of their associated rights, privileges, and honors, and will now present you with your diplomas. Will the audience please refrain from applause until all degrees have been awarded. <laughs> Kelly J. Adams, Candace A. O'Clear, Andrew R. Barron, Barbara A. Bianco, Alicia S. Biros, Alicia S. Blinn, Kerry E. Boyne, summa cum laude, Shauna R. Castro, Carol A. Chapman, Monty G. Chalo, cum laude, Jason M. Colvin, Nicole L. Cook, summa cum laude, Agnes B. Kulinski, Derek J. Davenport, cum laude. Jennifer L. Droney. Leslie S. Ducharme, magna cum laude. Lindsay L. Ellingwood. Devin J. Flock. Heather J. Foreman, cum laude. Susan M. Fox, magna cum laude. Lindsay L. Fullerton, cum laude. Robert J. Jeremiah, magna cum laude. Stefania J. Gronendek. Jeffrey D. Guyat, uh, Amy L. Hale, cum laude, Doc C. Hemmen, good luck, magna cum laude, Catherine L. Holland, Kristen C. Johnson, Raina A. Lupian Almeida, Arthur E. Manchester, cum laude, Joanne L. Mangiarelli, summa cum laude, Jason P. Marchetti, Andrea L. Marinaro, Rachel L. Marinelli, Joshua D. Maslin, cum laude, Kerry A. Medeiros, summa cum laude, Crystal G. Mellor, Jason B. Midwood, cum laude, Patricia J. Newcomb, Mary A. Oliver, Melissa A. Parkinson, cum laude, Jennifer L. Partridge, Ornella Passaretta, Zelia C. Pinto, Christine L. Rivard, Brent A. Robitaille, Janice A. Ryan, Hel uh, Helena C. Santos, cum laude, Julia Marie, Marie R. Santos, Lindsay H. Scott,
Kristen E. Scriber, uh, summa cum laude. Jessica N. Sinertia, cum laude. Elizabeth A. Cermak, cum laude. Suzanne F. Serra. Ricardo Simoz, cum laude. Carly M. Simpson. Jacob C. Sosnowski, cum laude. Jennifer M. Trapp, cum laude. Stephen J. Twining, magna cum laude. Natalia D. Banegas, cum laude. Paula Vachau Schiavone, summa cum laude. Jessica R. Vieira. Carol Ann Villanova, magna cum laude. Southery P. Von Somfu. Robert H. Whitaker, Jr., cum laude. Bachelor of Science degrees. Marguerite Aiello, cum laude. Nicholas Antruck. Michael Almeida. Sharon A. Alvidi. Katie L. Anderson, magna cum laude. Tracy R. Andrioli. Allison L. Andrews, summa cum laude. Desiree A. Antonelli, cum laude. Sabrina A. Antonelli. Justin J. Ansevino. Melissa Arnold. Danielle M. O'Clair. Holly Baylor-Jean, cum laude. Rebecca L. Bannon, summa cum laude. Patricia A. Barry, cum laude. Jennifer A. Barsamian, cum laude. Michelle A. Batista. Pauline B. Boudreau, summa cum laude. Bethany L. Belisle, magna cum laude. Bianca A. Bertoncini. Merrill A. Bitar. Michael J. Blackburn, cum laude. Andrea L. Uh, Bolton, cum laude. Elizabeth M. Bucock. Stephanie M. Bucock, cum laude. Emily V. Boscos, cum laude. Michelle T. Boudreau, cum laude. Tracy M. Boudreau, cum laude. Lauren M. Boyce. Jennifer L. Briggs. Joseph D. Brooks. Christine A. Brown, cum laude. Tina M. Brown, cum laude. Kelly J. Burroughs, cum laude. Sheila K. Cahill, magna cum laude. Stephanie B. Callaghan, cum laude. Jennifer A. Campbell, cum laude. Kate A. Canfield, cum laude. Mariana Capraro, magna cum laude. Kim M. Castigliego, cum laude. Shannon L. Cawley, cum laude. Peter R. Soprano. Lee A. Shagnan, cum laude. Alyssa L. Chamberlain, magna cum laude. Courtney L. Chavet. Jean C. Charnier, summa cum laude. Jennifer R. Christoph. Paul M. Coco, cum laude. Michaela C. Calipetro, summa cum laude. James E. Colbert, Jr., cum laude. Jennifer L. Conlon, cum laude. Shannon M. Connolly, cum laude. Aaron M. Conti, magna cum laude. Jennifer L. Copas. Tiffany A. Cormier. Alan M. Cody, cum laude. Tanya N. Cody, magna cum laude. Jamie M. Cotnoy, cum laude. Lisa M. Cornoyer. Rochelle A. Davis, cum laude. Justine M. Dean. Bethany L. T. DiNardo, magna cum laude. Kristen J. DePete. Lauren J. DeTore, cum laude. Michelle M. DiGiulio. Jacqueline M. DePreet. Gina M. DeQuinzio. Kimberly H. DeTusa, cum laude. Holly M. Domingos. Jennifer M. Boyle, 
Doyle, Doyle, Gumlaudi. Kevin Donovan. Goret Dos Santos, Cum Laude. Heather A. De Brule, Magna Cum Laude. Rebecca L. Ducharme. Melinda R. Dugan. Rebecca J. Dumont, Cum Laude. Brooke C. Ensign, Summa Cum Laude. Brenda A. Fabrizio. Julianne Fagnoli. Jean V. Farmer. Aaron D. Ferraro, Jessica A. L. Fetters, Ann M. Fiola, Jessica L. Frechette, Michelle L. Fredette, cum laude, Christopher Michael Gamache, cum laude, Lori M. Gaudet, Jessica M. Gauthier, magna cum laude, Stephanie Girardi, Christine A. Gilchrist, Rosemary Gomes, Alicia M. Gordon, magna cum laude, Linda M. Grace, cum laude, Lauren A. Greenan, Lynn A. Grimes, magna cum laude, Sherry L. Gronostalski, Kara M. Haddad, summa cum laude, Megan E. Hall, Nicole L. Hallam, cum laude. Bethany A. Hallas. Kevin J. Haxton, cum laude. Michael P. Hayes, magna cum laude. Anthony J. Hoyle. Crystal G. Hunter. Janine M. Hurlbert, cum laude. Elizabeth A. Hurley, cum laude. Ryan W. Jacobson. Christopher B. Jones, cum laude. Carrie Ann I. K. Uh, Saihong S. Kelly. Kristen L. Kirchmeyer. Shana Teresa Kupis. Stephanie L. Lafleur, cum laude. Anne Marie Lambert, magna cum laude. Lori A. Lambert, magna cum laude. Tracy L. Lanares, Kerry Lang, Joanne B. Langevin. <laughs> Wendy Sue Lapook, Magna Cum Laude. Crystal C. Lillibridge, Cum Laude. Alicia C. Longley, Magna Cum Laude, Frederick W. Lovegrove, Lisa E. Lutrario, Magna Cum Laude, Lorna A. Lyons, Cum Laude, Stephanie R. Magiacomo, Marissa A. Marandola, Cum Laude, Marcy M. Marat, Amy L. Martin Duffy, N. Daniel Masood, Magna Cum Laude. Jennifer L. Mateo, Cum Laude. Kristen A. McCoy, Cum Laude. Shannon L. McGee. Shauna E. McKay. Carla M. Medeiros, Cum Laude. Christine R. McHale, Cum Laude. Jessica Mello. Rebecca M. Miguel, cum laude. Jamie B. Mills. Michelle D. Malona, cum laude. Jennifer L. Monte, cum laude. Michelle F. Moreira. Michael A. Mota. Jessica C. Mulvey. Lynn M. Murray, cum laude. Mary Beth Murray. Danielle M. Nathold. Lauren B. O'Connor, Michelle A. Oliveira, magna cum laude, John M. Pascone, magna cum laude, Bethany L. Padalano, magna cum laude, Sarah G. Patnode, Nicola R. Picrull, magna cum laude, K. 
Kelly Pellerin Cum Laude, Scott R. Perry, Stephanie Petricone, Jesse M. Pru Cum Laude, Michelle L. Rainville, Melissa C. Raposa, Jennifer L. Reinagaldo, Elizabeth A. Rybrock, Christopher R. Richard Magna Cum Laude, Julie A. Rawdon, Christina M. Roberts, Tracy A. Rogers Magna Cum Laude, Raina J. Rossi, Rebecca L. Rosano, Lisa M. Salisbury Cum Laude, Kristen E. Santos, Kristen Schmiedeknecht, Sabrina M. Shattuck, Karen J. Smith Cum Laude, uh, Lori A. Smith Cum Laude, Mary Ellen E. Souza, Janine M. Spader Summa Cum Laude, Karen L. Strubring Cum Laude, Barbara H. Svittel, cum, summa cum laude. Matthew J. Tech, cum laude. Nicole M. Tetro, magna cum laude. Scott R. Thibuto. Katie E. Thomas. Lita Tonto. Stephanie S. Sinikas. Kristen M. Twadowski, summa cum laude. Kyleen J. Vadene, magna cum laude. Lisa J. Vinaco, magna cum laude. Katie Volino. Kerry Wheeler. Jessica A. Wildenholm, magna cum laude. Erica A. Williams, cum laude. James E. Williamson, cum laude. Scott R. Winsom, Winship, cum laude. Brooke M. Young, cum laude. Ellen J. Zakowski. Nicholas S. Alfred. Mr. President, Dr. Mildred Bates, Associate Professor of Social Work and Chair of the Bachelor of Social Work Program, will present candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Social Work. Dr. Bates, Dr. Bates is substituting this morning for Dean George Mitri, who today is at Tulane University attending the graduation of his daughter. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Social Work degree award degree please stand. Uh, Mr. President, I have the honor to present the class of 2003 candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Social Work. Those candidates who have completed all requirements for the degree are recommended to you by the faculty and the Board of Governors for Higher Education. Members of the class of 2003, candidates for the Bachelor of Social Work degree, by virtue of the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the faculty of Rhode Island College and the Board of Governors for Higher Education, I confer upon those of you who have completed the appropriate requirements, the Bachelor of Social Work degree, with all of its associated rights, privileges, and honors, and will now present you with your diplomas. Will the audience please refrain from applause until all the degrees have been awarded? Crystal M. Ballou, Dale R. Belusio Summa Cum Laude, C. 
Sylvia M. Borges. Angela M. Kano, cum laude. Sheila A. Capiz. Lisa S. Carvalho. Shannon M. Cassidy. Stephanie R. Chandler. Melissa A. Conroy, summa cum laude. Anthony E. Dagnanica. Angela M. Diaz. Stacy DeRamo. Cindy P. Estrada. Evelyn G. Feliz Fria. Tony Gatlin. Laura M. Gentile. Angela P. Gomes. Susan M. Hull, summa cum laude. Margarita Jaramillo. Heather M. Keen, cum laude. Wansaya Karma. Amanda T. King. Carrie A. Kubiak, cum laude. Pamela B. Lacerda, cum laude. Carol J. Levely, cum laude. Rhea D. Logan. Susan M. Macaron, cum, magna cum laude. Yvonne M. Maddox. Glenna L. Mangana. Jessica A. Mernick, cum laude. Marlo M. Mooney, cum laude. Sally B. Moore, cum laude. Randy A. Ogle. Susan J. Ramondo Banks. Stephen Rusi. Jennifer L. Stanford. Matthew A. Wood. Mr. President, Dr. James A. Swikert, Professor of Accounting and Dean of the School of Management and Technology, will present candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees within the School of Management and Technology please stand. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the class of 2003 candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Those candidates who have completed all requirements for the degree are recommended to you by the faculty and by the Board of Governors for Higher Education. Members of the class of 2003, candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, by virtue of the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the faculty of Rhode Island College and the Board of Governors for Higher Education, I confer upon those of you who have completed the appropriate requirements, the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science degrees with all of their associated rights, privileges, and honors, and now will now present to you with your diplomas. Hold them up for a minute. <laughs> Christopher N. Jolico, Gregory T. Joyce, Nancy M. Lopes, Catherine M. Pettit, magna cum laude, Shannon L. Presky, Caitlin J. Sharp, Summa cum laude. Special presentation by James Smith. Haley R. Smith, cum laude. Please. Elaine A. Argerwal. Nelson Aguiar. 
Jennifer A. Anderson. Laura F. Orego, cum laude. David S. Arce. Rosemary E. Asensio. Ende M. Ba. Roger L. Barros, cum laude. Lisa J. Bankowskis. Maria A. Bautista. Maloup, Maloup S. Bunn. Carrie L. Cataret. Michelle C. Cady. Christopher M. Cameron. Lauren A. Chattel. Colin J. Kotu II. Gary P. Crowley. Nicole M. Didana. Fola Damasio. Jennifer A. Dixon. Julie K. Durazio. Elizabeth F. Dos Santos. Kenneth M. Dresic, cum laude. Anthony T. Fallon. Hasna Fanieri. Karen Fernandez. Linda L. Fornia. Nicholas L. Francis. Jason E. Frezza. Abraham G. Gay. Roberto S. Gomes. Michelle M. Goncalo. Sarah B. Hebert, magna cum laude. Natalie A. Hernandez. Joshua L. Hicks. Talia A. Ionetta. Jeffrey M. Jennison. Suzanne M. Colts. Judith M. Lancelotta, magna cum laude. Daniel P. Leander, Jr. Etelvina M. Leiter, cum laude. Jing M. Liu. Paul D. Lobello, cum laude. Brian J. Lonergan. William A. Lopez. Philippe J. Lorenko. Evo A. Luis. Diana N. Marquez, cum laude. Mariana F. Martins. Alexandra M. Marolanda. James A. Macarivi. Sarah J. Mello, summa cum laude. Frank M. Marola. Andrea S. Moniz. Jessica L. Nalet. Ariantoya Ochervani. John Oji. Susan C. O'Shea, magna cum laude. Doris Owasu Sekere. Gianna Pagliata. Glenn L. Palmer. Bethy Fimacek. Chantra Pong. Kara R. Pontbrion. Stephen M. Pope. Christopher R. Richter. William F. Ruiz. Allison L. Riggio. Robert A. Russell. Tina M. Serino. Cheryl D. Sedelli. Rhonda C. Salisbury. David P. Santos. Edwin D. Silverio. Christina M. Smith. Norma Soares. David D. Souza. Tina Southeseng. Chamrom Svey. Christine M. Thompson. Christopher P. Tiberi. Bruce A. Vieira. Scott M. Vocio. Robert S. Williamson. And Ayla Son. Congratulations to all the graduates.
congratulations to you. At this point in the program, it gives me great honor to introduce, for the purpose of bringing the greetings of the state of Rhode Island, its 57th governor, the Honorable Donald L. Kacheri, and the lovely First Lady. Would you please stand, Sue? Here he is. Dr. Kacheri. <laughs> And I want to thank the members of the state police for getting you here at the right time. And the right time was any time you got here. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, President Najer. And uh, I had about a one hour budget speech. You don't want mind hearing that, would you? <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry, I have no speech, and I apologize for getting here late. We're moving between commencements, but I am very, very honored and happy to be here to welcome, uh, first of all, all the parents and family that are here. Congratulate all of you graduates. This is a great, great institution. You, you should be extraordinarily proud because uh, this institution is in its 150th year, sesquicentennial year. So, and Sue and Mrs. Kachiri and I are honorary co-chairs. We're excited. We kicked it off last week. This is a great institution in our state that has contributed so much. So many of the parents that are here, so many of you graduates, I look forward to your contributing to our state the way you have for so many, many, many years. Uh, Sue, my wife, uh, got her master's in health education in 1993 from Rhode Island College, so it has a fond place in our hearts. 1993 she got that, all right. Uh, and I just want to wish you all the best. Uh, you've got uh, so much ahead of you. I am so excited about the possibilities and what's happening in our state today all over. Uh, and I know we've got other general officers here, former governors here. Uh, we have, and we're going to work. I pledge you, I'm going to do everything I can with the team in place to work and build this state. But I need your help. I need you to stay here. And I need you to contribute and help us get there. So congratulations to all of you, to your families, to the faculty. Everyone, great day. Thank you, Governor, for those words to the class of 2003, to their family members and guests, and to all the members of the college community. We congratulate you on the honor you received earlier today at Bryan College and would like to extend to you and to Mrs. Kacheri our gratitude on your willingness to serve as honorary co-chairs of our year-long Rhode Island College sesquicentennial observation. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, First Lady, for your support of Rhode Island College and the system of public higher education. Mr. President, Dr. Richard R. Weiner, Professor of Political Science and Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, will present the candidates for baccalaureate degrees within the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> okay. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees within the Faculty of Arts and Sciences proudly stand. Mr. President, I have the honor to present the class of 2003 candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of General Studies, 
Bachelor of Music in Performance and Bachelor of Science within the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Those who have completed all requirements for the degrees are recommended to you by the faculty and the Board of Governors for Higher Education. Members of the class of 2003, candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of General Studies, Bachelor of Music and Performance, and Bachelor of Science. By virtue of the authority vested in me and with the concurrent action of the faculty of Rhode Island College, and the Board of Governors for Higher Education. I confer upon those of you who have completed the appropriate requirements, the degrees for which you are qualified, with all of their associated rights, privileges, and honors, and will now present you with your diplomas. Will the audience please refrain from applause until all degrees have been awarded? Are we ready? Bachelor of Arts, William Dory IV, cum laude. Lisa Adamo. Falshada Adesuya. Melissa Agrela. Jeffrey Ahern. Christine M. Ojoyan. Idiwu Akinche. Monica Almeida, cum laude. Wendy Akuri Boivin. Lori Arnold. Eric M. Asselin. Dauda Ba. Jessica Bailey, magna cum laude. Jillian A. Baker, cum laude. Joshua Barden. Derek R. Barnett. Russell N. Barron. Alana Barta, cum laude. Amanda Bocaj, summa cum laude. Dawn Beauregard. Angela Bedard. George Belgard. Dawn Benson, magna cum laude. Marina Burdak, cum laude. Mark Bernier, magna cum laude. Maureen Barucha, cum laude. Kyle Black, cum laude. Nicholas Blair. Jamie Blaze. Deborah Booth, magna cum laude. Cynthia Borden. Jean Bouchard, magna cum laude. Kelly Boucher, magna cum laude. Melissa Brady, cum laude. Jimette N. Brooks. Nathan Brown, Peter Brestecki, Lisa Benny, Stephen Burke Jr., Marilyn Cabral, Kelly Cahill, Brenda Callahan, Julie Carcady, cum laude, Alyssa Carde, magna cum laude, Jenny Cardoso, Brian Carne, cum laude, Nicole Carrier, summa cum laude. Michaela Cash. Amanda Celeste. Holly Chadwick. Nuria Chantre, cum laude. Joseph Chassi, Jr. Jennifer Chiquette. Alexandra Chipola. Duane Clement. Joshua Cliff. Cindy Coelho, Sandy Cafone, Linda Colby, Carrie Ann Cooney, cum laude, Lisa E. Cooney, Lisa E. Coons, cum laude, Lindsay Coristine, magna cum laude, Tia Corliss, Erin Cox, Jennifer Cronin, Garrett Crozier, magna cum laude, Dulibel Cruz, magna cum laude, Linda Curtin, cum laude, Jennifer Sear, Anthony Don, 
Gregory Dalpe, summa cum laude. Kimberly Dandria, Julia Dannenberg, Megan Davis, Yahida N. De Jesus, Kenneth Depo, Rachel Derderian, Jason Deschamps, Jessica Desolets, Kelly Donahue, Sharon Donahue, Jeremy Doucette, Heather Doyle, Dareth Doyon, Jacob Dunphy, Adam Eklund Magna Cum Laude, Daniel Ennis Cum Laude, Jennifer Erickson Cum Laude, Lindsay Erickson, Robert Fagan, Erica Falone, Stephanie Farpella, Amy Farrell, cum laude, Catherine Feeney, Ilana Feinberg, Michael Felix, Catherine Furland, Paula Ferreira, cum laude, Manuel Figueiredo, Brian Flamand, Nancy Fogarty, Andrea Fontaine, cum laude, Brian Fontaine, cum laude, Robert Forand, Jason Ford, Sandra Fortis, Jody Fournier, cum laude, Tara Francis, Anne Marie Franco, Melinda Freifeld, Vivanu Gandonu, Tracy Garrity, Jamie Lee Galin, Stephanie Gelsomino, magna cum laude, Nicole Gemma, Brandy Gerrish, Elena Gerzag, James Giamarco, Amy Giger, cum laude, Guiana Gomez, Melinda Gonzalez, Kurt Gorter, Delia Gouvier, cum laude, Jennifer Gregoire, magna cum laude, Michael Guernieri, cum laude, Stephen Gilmain, Michael Gnud, <laughs> Carolina Gutierrez, Carolyn Harris, summa cum laude, Anna Hernandez, Jason Hernandez, Claudia Herman, summa cum laude, Alicia Hersberger, Patrick Hodge, Kristen Hoffman, cum laude, Lisa Hubis, Sherilyn Hudson, Rachel Hughes, magna cum laude, Susan Hughes, magna cum laude, Shannon Huey, Lori Ianati, cum laude, Michael Iliano, Lisa Jackson, Christy Jeffries, magna cum laude, Colleen Jocelyn, Michael J. Gizen, cum laude, Suzanne Cars, cum laude, Caitlin Kelleher, magna cum laude, Pamela Kelleher, cum laude, Daniel Kimmel, Matthew King, magna cum laude, Tracy King, Denise Clinshaw, magna cum laude, Sarah Kopitsky, Kenneth Curry, Thomas Kozaka, Kira Labadi, Gregory Laban, Richard Laflamme, Lisa Legace, cum laude, James Lanzi, Laureen Laprade, Alan Lapre, magna cum laude, Bethany Ladoro, Jason LaRose, cum laude, Eric Leap, cum laude, Andrew Leonard, Mark Leonard, cum laude, Kerry Lesage, cum laude, Neil Libby, Michael Lo Cicero, 
Elissa Lopez, Jacqueline Lopez, Maximo Laura, Kelly Lynch, magna cum laude, Jeffrey Machado, Thomas Mack, Lisa Maduro, Timothy Mahoney, magna cum laude, Jody Lynn Mancieri, Anthony Marchetti, Jason Marley, Jennifer Marty, magna cum laude, Jenna Masali, Alicia Massey, magna cum laude, Garrett Matteo, cum laude, Kevin McCaskill, Jennifer McCoy, magna cum laude, Chrissy McCullough, Karen McCullough, magna cum laude, Anthony McDonald, cum laude, Charlotte McEnery, summa cum laude, Jennifer McMahon, Brian McMillan, Cheryl McNeil, Amanda Medeiros, Amy Medeiros, Kevin Medeiros, magna cum laude, Dawn Malikian, Eileen Minard, Catherine Mendonca, Justin Mercier, Stephen Mercurio Jr., Allison Messina, cum laude, Joseph Michalizzi III, Melissa Mizizic, Christine Moniz, cum laude, Sando Moore II, Carrie Maro, cum laude, Carla Morera, cum laude, Anthony Hoyes Marino, cum laude, Robert Murray, cum laude, Karen Mayumi Nab, summa cum laude, Boris Nicholas, Ava Nera, Kim Nicole, Charles Nolda, Frederick Novoselsky, Charlene Oakley, Tiana Ochoa Gonzalez, Amy O'Connor, cum laude, Michael Oliver, cum laude, Michael Olokoya, Limari Ortiz, Joseph Osmanski III, cum laude, Bethany Page, cum laude, Shana Pagliaro, Nicole Palin, magna cum laude, Susan Palmieri, Soren Pan, cum laude, Becky Panza, cum laude, Jared Paquette, Tara Parent, summa cum laude, Angela Pauline, Anne Marie Piantadosi, magna cum laude, Heather Picard, Sean Picard, Nicole Pike, magna cum laude, Kelly Pinheiro, Michael Poland, Jeremy Pomfret, Tony Poole, cum laude, Christopher Poplaski, Julia Pretty, Christopher Puleo, Timothy Randall, Joshua Raposa, Maya Radigan, Eddie Remy, Edith Ribbit de Lucero, magna cum laude, Kimberly Richard, Dennis Richards cum laude, Tina Ristecare, summa cum laude, Alicia Rivera, Karen Rivera, Emily Rochon, Karen Rock, cum laude, Andrew Rogers, cum laude, Rebecca Romano, magna cum laude, Tara Romano, cum laude, Kelly Roundtree, Timothy Roy, cum laude, Joseph Safi, Stephanie Salvatore, Linda Sanchez, 
Shannon Sanders, Phil Ray Von Hein Schechter, Shelley Schofield, magna cum laude, Carl Scott, Sarah Senarchia cum laude, Lisa Serechia, Jennifer Shea, Patrick Shelton cum laude, Cassandra Silva, Paul Silva, magna cum laude, Jennifer, Jenna Silvestri cum laude, Susan Simonin, Paul Sivo Sr. cum laude, Casey Smith, magna cum laude, O.T. Sampasuth, John Soriano, Christina Souza, Daryl Souza cum laude, Matthew Souza, Judith Spramuli, summa cum laude, Jennifer Spar, cum laude, Michelle St. Germain, Christy Stabile, magna cum laude, Jennifer Stevens, cum laude, Andrea Stewart, magna cum laude, Phyllis Stone, Holly St. Ange, Paula Suero, Jennifer Suswold, Heidi Svetil, Elizabeth Swan, cum laude, Melissa Sweeney, Carla Tavares, Kristen Tavares, Gina Tedesco, cum laude, Stacy Theroux, Kerry Thibault, Leslie Ann Thomas, Rachel Thomas, Jessica Torgan, Kevin Trimmer, cum laude, Dennis Trin, Karen Tully, magna cum laude, Lynn Turner, magna cum laude, Nicole Underwood, Rebecca Ursioli, Jean Valcourt, cum laude, Carolyn Vallot, Cheryl Van Geisen, cum laude, Michael Veltri, Tiffany Ventura, magna cum laude, David Walsh, Mason Waring, Ruth Wartenberg, cum laude, Gabrielle Washington, Dorsey Weber, Derek Veselovsky, Brian White, Karen Whitehead, Stacy Whitlock, cum laude, Nara Verzbicki, Rebecca Wildenhain, cum laude, Joyce Ka Yu Wong, James Woodmancy, Heather Wunschel, cum laude, Steve Yam. Bajako, Ian Zagalgia, Alexandra Zaldana, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Michael Camera, cum laude, John Keefe, Miriam Zagorski, magna cum laude, Bachelor of General Studies, Florence. M. Baker, cum laude. Summa cum laude, Linda Garvin, 
Laurel Horta Cum Laude, Jose Montero, Bachelor of Music Performance, Jessica Carrera, Jason Thompson, the Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Olakimi Akanji, April Bannon, Kelly Berthiome, Tricia Barube Cum Laude, Christina Bolduc Cum Laude, Stacy Chevalier, Leslie Clemens, Sherry Costa Cum Laude, Rachel Dalpe, Mark Denino Cum Laude, Torna Dixon, Erica Droll, cum laude, Kathleen Fava, Lindsay Fisher, cum laude, Kimberly Foster, Stephanie Goral, cum laude, Paul Gosselin, summa cum laude, Erin Gween, Karen Heideminos, Carolyn Havens, Robert Healy, Kerry Jolicoeur, Jennifer Kelly, Amy LaPierre, Jessica Lemieux, magna cum laude, Judith Lynch, magna cum laude, Deanna Mantone, cum laude, Christine Matos, Patricia Mojak, magna cum laude, James Mooney, Crystal Mulcahy, Elizabeth Murray, Anna Oliveira, Angela Oliveira, Gary Pigeon, Amanda Pong Cum Laude, Martin Quinn, Allison Rayo, Lori Ann Rigo, Ilya Rickrud, Jennifer Rillinger, Karen Robinson, magna cum laude. Brianne Rogers. Shuni Sine, cum laude. Jennifer Shea. Josephine St. John. Elizabeth Stansberry. Rebecca Sullivan. Georgina Talavera Veloz. Elisa Feveridge. Nicole Toisson, Catherine Wojcik, Rosemary Yella, last and certainly not least. <laughs> the Faculty of Arts and Sciences wishes you bon voyage, go in peace, look for peace. Let's hear it for everyone. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there was one of the graduates that you saw that gave me a big hug. She started here when she was 74 years old. She's graduating, to, she's graduated today. She had her birthday last week. She's 84 years old. And that's Florence Baker. Florence, would you stand up again? Way over there. And she tells me she's going to be starting her master's degree <laughs> very shortly. We wish you all well. At this time, I call upon Miguel Lopes, member of the class of 1971 and president of the Rhode Island College Alumni Association to bring you greetings from the association. Mr. Lopes.
It's with unbelievable pride that I ask you, the class of 2003, to please rise right now. I bring you greetings from the association which represents the more than 42,000 living alumni of Rhode Island College. On behalf of the board of the Alumni Association, and by virtue of your receipt of a, of a Rhode Island College degree today, I hereby induct you into the Rhode Island College Alumni Association and leave you with this thought. Your degree in the future will be only as good as the college that awarded it. Continue to support and advance your college financially, politically, emotionally, and most importantly in spirit. Be active alumni who care about the college. Help to guarantee that it will be strong for those who follow you, just as those who came this way before you have done. Best wishes to all of you. Please be seated. Now that you are seated, let me invite the graduates to stand once more. <laughs> to applaud and to acknowledge those who have helped you reach the milestone, your parents, family members, the college faculty, staff, and administration. Thank you. I see some tassels on the right. You now have the right to wear them on the left, heretofore. It means you are a graduate. We all share in your pride of accomplishment and trust that you will uphold the honor of this institution. May you find such success in all the days ahead. Congratulations and Godspeed. At, at the processional that began today's ceremony, the Del Sesto Mace was carried by Dr. Patricia Thomas, chair of the Council of Rhode Island College, which represents all of the faculty of the college. The Mace will be carried in the recessional by Alumni Association President Miguel Lopes. This traditional change of Mace bearer represents a symbolic passing on of responsibility from the faculty to the Alumni Association into which you have just been inducted. Following the singing of the college alma mater, please remain at your seats during the recessional so that the procession may leave. Whereupon, I declare this commencement to be concluded. Please, please rise, everyone. There's the band. One, two, three.
Bucket. 